Hello everyone, my name is Astrid Bunge and today I will show you our new discrete operator for polygonal and polyhedral meshes, the diamond Laplacian. So the Laplacian is an important tool in geometry processing for surfaces as well as for volumetric meshes and it has been especially well investigated for triangle and tetrahedral meshes alike. And from the vast selection of different discretizations, the cotangent Laplacian is probably the most prominent one we all had to deal with at some points in our lives. However, at least for the surface case, the idea to derive a polygon Laplacian working on any kind of tessellation has actually received quite some attention over the last years. Here, for, um, here are some examples for polygon Laplacians starting with Alexas and Wadetsky's work in 2011 and two recent papers from last year. Um, these operators are all based on well-known discretization strategies like finite elements or deck, but our idea is based on an alternative approach since we make use of a discretization strategy called the finite volume method. And in contrast to approximating the solution of a PDE at a local vertex, the finite volume methods are based on the idea to consider the integral of a differential in a small region. And there exists a number of identities that allow expressing these integrals of a differential as actually an integral over only the boundary of the region, as you can see here, for example, for divergence, gradient, and Laplacian. And its main idea goes as follows. We start with a normal mesh, from now on called primal mesh, and the finite volume method also makes use of a second tessellation, the dual mesh. The vertices of this dual mesh lie within our original faces, and it faces would form so-called control volumes for our initial vertices, determining the region over which the PDE is then evaluated. And the original face itself would then spend control volumes once again for the dual vertices, so we would have more degrees of freedom at which our PDE is evaluated, since we are basically using both of these stru mesh structures. However, at this point, we are already in trouble, since most of the finite volume derivations require the mesh to be Delaunay, which is not always a given in our field, or typically require the primal and dual edges to be at least orthogonal, which is also not the case, or at least here in my drawing. But we do not have to worry about that, since we use a finite volume method that directly deals with this problem, the discrete duality finite volume method, or DDFV in short because this method does not require orthogonal edges and uses an alternative type of structure. As you can see here, it forms so-called diamond cells, um, formed by a primal and a dual edge, and evaluates a local gradient on these squads, dividing the dual and primal constructions into a new so-called diamond mesh. And, as previously mentioned, we are of course not only interested in triangle meshes, but we are happy to see that this diamond mesh can be formed with any type of tessellation. But what to do with those diamonds? Well, the literature on DDFV provides really a lot of different derivations for the per diamond gradient. For example, this one is based on the primal dual axis nu and nu star, as well as their enclosed angle alpha. And while this construction is still quite easy to implement, we found an alternative formulation a tad more intuitive because by making use of Stokes' theorem, we can express the gradient as the sum of the orthogonal edges scaled by the function value interpolated at the edge midpoints. And all of these can easily be obtained and give us a nice and simple gradient. However, before we can make use of it, there are some problems we have to tackle first. First, the original DDFV method is only defined on planar 2D meshes, not the two manifolds embedded in 3D the computer graphic field is mostly interested in, and that would be of course a serious limitation. Second, the dual mesh introduces a bunch of additional degrees of freedom, which would increase the intervention of the system matrix significantly, raising the computation cost and actually providing us with solutions we do not really care for, since we computer graphics people typically just take the mesh as is and are not really considering refinements or alternative mesh structures. So what to do? Let's start with the 2D problem. Um, in general, diamonds are not necessarily planar in the 3D embedding. They can really just flop around the primal edge in any constellation. However, we can isometrically unfold them into the plane around the, this hinge edge, the red one, 
representing them in an intrinsic 2D coordinate system, which is nice because now we can apply the 2D, the previously shown 2D gradient computation. And as coordinate axes, we start with the normalized primal edge, once again the red one, and project the blue edges 1L and 1R onto the orthogonal complement of the primal edge. Um, because this ensures the orthogonality of the second axis and that it lies within the plane, spanned by both of these triangles. Having solved problem 1, now on to problem 2. Because here we make use of the same idea we introduced in the polygon Laplacian made simple paper from last year. Given a general arbitrary polygon, we can construct now the dual vertices by inserting additional point per face. This can be achieved by multiplying the original vertex positions with a so-called prolongation matrix, here depicted as P, um, which retains the original vertices, but it also contains an additional row with Fn weights for the original face vertices, resulting in the new face vertex position. And in our case, we go for the minimizer of the squared triangle areas, since it typically lies within the boundary of the star-shaped polygon. And doing this for all faces of the mesh gives us the dual mesh structure on which we can then compute our diamond operators. But to avoid the additional degrees of reading at these new vertices, we have to do an initial step. Um, here we make use of a so-called restriction matrix to redistribute our obtained solutions for the dual vertices among the primal vertices. This is also easy to achieve, since in this case, the restriction is simply the transpose of our prolongation matrix from the previous step. And by combining these two steps, we basically hide the whole DDFV computation and the obtained, and the obtained solutions really live only on our initial mesh. Solving problem two. And equipped with these constructions, we are then finally able to define our new polygon diamond operator because the local intrinsic gradient becomes now a two times four matrix per diamond scaled by the area of the diamond. These are then collected into a global gradient matrix here donated as G hat and, multiply, and we multiply it with a prolongation to obtain our, global, our global diamond gradient operator. And following the former definition of the divergence, um, we obtain it by taking the negative transpose of the gradient and therefore really naturally include the whole restriction step from uh, earlier and multiply it with a diagonal matrix containing the diamond areas, as you can see here. The Laplacian now being formally defined as the divergence of the gradients of function, um, we can simply define it by using the product of the formally introduced matrices and therefore ob ob obtain our new diamond Laplacian stiffness matrix. And now we have all that we need and can look at the performance of our operator. Let's start with our, some qualitative demos for you. Here I'm given a quad core. And here, for example, I can smooth it into a more spherical shape with a several time step, getting rid of all the bumps and bruises of my initial mesh and shaping it to a more spherical form. Or alternatively, I can use a mesh here with now a different tessellation and, for example, compute its mean curvature, which also gives really nice result, results with the help of our diamond, diamond Laplacian. But qualitative results aside, let's look at the quantitative results. Because here we are also really strong. As for example, here we evaluated the convergence behavior of the mean curvature on different tessellated unit spheres. And our operator, depicted in green, obtains really strong results. The other lines show the other polygon operators I introduced earlier. Red is for Aletska and Skwadetsky, purple for Dejo Spatz and the bronze operator from last year, and orange represents the approach from Bunge, Herholz, Kassel and Butch. And taking a look at the results for the geodesic distances on the same spheres, for example, um, paints a similar picture. Here you can see the normalized L2 error, but once again, our operator really shines in its performance and yields very low errors. And it does not stop there. For all our tests, we get the desired convergence rates, and although some of the other polygon operators are able to surpass our method in certain settings, our diamond operator typically comes first or second, and especially noteworthy, 
On triangle meshes, in contrast to other poly polygon operators, we are not reduced to the well-known cotangent discretization and generally yield better results. This makes our operator not only interesting for the polygon setting, but also for normal triangle meshes. But why stopping on surface meshes? Um, the idea of a general polyhedral Laplacian is also pretty appealing, and our 2D theory really extends nicely and intuitively to 3D polyhedral meshes. Because once again, given a primal volume mesh, we can simply insert dual vertices inside of each cell to spend now a volumetric dual mesh. And the only question remaining is as how to define a volumetric diamond. The most obvious approach was explored in the so-called CVDDFV method, short for cell vertex, in because instead of using a primal edge to spend the diamond, the volume case goes one dimension up and uses a primal face, combined with the dual cell vertices. However, this construction has the known limitation that the kernel of the gradient, and therefore the kernel of the Laplacian, has a higher, can have a higher dimension than one. So it no longer contains only constant functions and now violates one of the main properties the discrete Laplacian should provide. So it's a serious problem. To avoid this, the CVFE for cell vertex phase edge DDFV method was introduced. Um, it uses new degrees of freedom at the primal edges and within the, within the phases to reduce the diamond cell's dividing phase to a triangular shape. This solves the problem of a higher dimensional kernel, proofs for that can be found in the paper, um, but its gradient formula involves rather peculiar control volumes one has to compute, and is really not as intuitive. Our approach, however, also uses these minimal diamonds, but we forego the edge vertex and only use an additional vertex inside the faces of the mesh. Both face and cell vertices um, can once again be obtained with the help of a prolongation matrix and do not pose a major problem. Once again, we first minimize the squared triangle areas, as before, to obtain the face points, and then minimize the squared tetrahedral volumes for the cell points. So, the volume our di diamond encloses is now bounded by a triangulated surface, and we can assume that our given function is linear on the triangles defined at the, defined at the given vertices. We therefore get the following expression for the volume gradient, which is consistent with the surface case, but this time using the area vectors a, y, j, k in contrast to the orthogonal edges. But these vectors are simply pointing outward, are pointing in outward normal directions, and their magnitude is equal to the triangle areas. So they are also really easy to obtain. Um, now taking the mean over the region by dividing the integral by its volume leads to our local gradient, and once again its matrix expression. And all the remaining steps are basically analog to the surface case, making it really easy to construct the Laplacian for the volume meshes. So once again, a qualitative results, let's have a look at it. Now we can compute the geodesic distances on our volume mesh, and instead of only traveling on the surfaces, we also see that the geodesics walk through our mesh, and we get nice results on all shapes. But the quantitative results paint an even more apparent picture than the surface case. On tetrahedral meshes, we compare to the standard volume cotangent Laplacian, here denoted as primal, and the dual Laplacian introduced in the paper Properties of Laplace, opera Laplace Operators for Tetrahedral Meshes. For the other tessellations, we used the previously introduced volume DDFV methods and the 3D extension of the polygonal Laplacian made simple paper, um, depicted in orange. But once again, our operator performs favorably on all tessellations, and additional tests can of course be found in the paper, but the diamond operator really shined with a high accuracy and performance. Considering the properties a discrete Laplacian should be able to fulfill, um, we are able to retain almost all of them, with the exception of the maximum principle. But that's really a shortcoming most of the non discretizations have to deal with. Um, but still, we also have to face some limitations our method, method has to deal with. Because while still remaining a local operator, the relevant neighborhood for a single vertex extends the run ring neighborhood, ex for, as for example needed in the cotangent formula, and therefore leads to a denser matrix pattern than other discretizations have. 
Um, this is caused by the prolongation of the dual vertices and actually leads to higher computational cost, since the factorization and the solving of the system matrix simply takes more time. But to conclude this talk, we were able to generalize the 2D DFDFV method to two manifolds in 3D, and we were also able to find, at least to our knowledge, the first simple Laplacian operator for general polygon and polyhedral meshes that, map values, that maps values at vertices to values at vertices with the help of our prolongation and restriction approach. It fulfills many nice, theori nice theoretical features, while its numerical results are really strong. And although it may be a bit more expensive than other operators, its overall performance, as leads to us, convinced us that the additional costs are really worth the effort. We will also provide our source code under the following GitHub link, which can also be found in the paper. And with that, thank you for your attention.